Welcome to another game tutorial. So today we're going to look at two things. So using displace maps, which I already opened up on my previous video, and also using the color to alpha to make it look like that we've painted on a surface. So using both of these together can give you a very realistic look for the paint. You can just do it with the color to alpha, but with that alone, the paint or the pattern that you put onto the wood doesn't look as realistic as it won't follow the contours of the surface. So we're going to use, create something like this where you can see that it follows the contours of the surface and it looks like it's been painted on to it. So we'll start here with our base image. So the order that you do these things in is important again because you can't do non-destructive editing. So non-destructive editing is labeled to come into GIMP from I think version 3.2 but for the moment we're stuck to destructive editing so that means the order we do things are uh, the do, that we do things in are uh, important for this so so what we're going to do uh, first of all is is we need to create a map for our displaced map so we need to do this first uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a duplicate of our background and like in my previous video, which you can watch, I'll put a link below, we go to our filters. Uh, sorry, first of all, we go to our colors and then we go to saturation and we turn our saturation completely down. Now we, we want to add a little bit of contrast for the map. It works better if we add a little bit of contrast. So for that, we go back to colors again and we're going to just use curves and create a little S shapes. So we get two points in the curve, drag the, the shadows, make the shadows darker and the highlights brighter. So just adding more contrast to, to our image. And then we click on OK. And then finally what we do is I'm just going to zoom into 100%. We add a little bit of softening. So I'm going to go to my filters this time and down to blur and Gaussian blur. And for the softness, I'm just going to add uh, one, I think so. If I just add one, this is a, enough, just a slight softness so the edges aren't so sharp. So it gives a little bit more realistic look and click on OK. Now I'm just going to move this layer down to below the main layer and I'm going to turn it off because we don't need it visible. We just need it as a reference when we do our displace map on the text that we're going to create. So I'm going to do Control shift j to zoom back out. And next of all, we want to create our text. So I'm going to choose our text. And for this, I'm using this brush script, MT Italic. Uh, so if you want to change it, you can click here. There are other types, but I thought because we're doing paint, it would be nice to mimic a paint. Uh, look. And we can move to our move tool and then just move it into place. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to add our displace map. So we come to our filters and we go down to our map and we go to the space map. Now, before we do this, it can be a good idea to just zoom in at 100% so we can see exactly what's happening to our font when we're changing it with the displace map. So we choose the displace map. We choose the first aux input. And I choose the image I've opened and I'm choosing my black and white image, so I double click to choose it and then you can start adding your displace map which you should see then reacting to, to the contours of the image behind. And you can turn on the center displacement, I find this sometimes just helps a little bit with the overall displace map. And once you're happy with it, then we can click on OK. And I'm just doing Control, Shift and J to zoom back out. 
So the next thing we want to do is integrate this a little bit more with the background. So for that we're going to use the color to alpha. So in order to do that, the first thing that we need to do is, is we just need to move our text layer underneath our main photo layer. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the pixels layer has an alpha channel. So if you right click on it and you see alpha channel in white, then go ahead and click add alpha channel. If you right click on it and this is grayed out, it just means it already has one so you don't need to create it. So we've added the alpha channel now. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down alt and click on our text layer in order to add this uh, color to alpha. So we can start seeing the text coming through and we can start blending it with the wood texture. Before I do that, I just want to add a little bit of feathering. So I go to my select and I go to feather and I'm going to feather it by, I think three pixels is enough. So three is here and I click on okay. So I'm just feathering, soft, softening the edge of my selection. So when we do the color to alpha, it just looks a little bit better. It just integrates a little bit nicer. And then we go to our colors and we do our color to alpha. So we can see it start coming through. So what it's saying at the moment is, is with anything that bears a resemblance or is white will be transparent. So we can change that. We can choose a color from our wood surface just to get a little bit more of a realistic look. And we can, you can hold down your mouse button and you can scroll over the wood surface just to see when it's something I rather like, maybe this one I think is, is, is pretty good. And you can also change our transparency threshold. So you can bring it, turn it up a little bit if you want. And you can also t turn down your opacity threshold, uh, which I don't find so useful. If we zoom in to a little bit closer, so 100%. And if I start lowering my opac opacity threshold, you can see it just becomes a little bit more opaque. So with this, it doesn't maybe work so well. So once you're happy with this, that's at zero, I can increase it a small amount. You can go ahead and click on OK. Now we want to leave our selection active for a moment because we want to do some some further blending. So, so one further blending that we can do is, is that we can add a little bit of blurring to our top layer, a bit of Gaussian blurring. So it'll only affect inside the area that is selected. So these pieces of the, the top layer that are showing through. So we go to filters and we go to blur and we go to Gaussian blur. And obviously for this case, 1.5 is way too much. So we lower it down to 0.5. So I'm just gonna turn off my preview, turn it on, that looks good. So it's just, it doesn't look so realistic when it's so sharp. So this just softens it up a little bit. So I click on okay to accept that. And then we can do control shift A to deselect and control shift J to zoom out. And that's my painted text now combined with the surface below. You can also, if you wish to, uh, you can play around with the opacity. So that's my text to paint on a wooden surface. If you like this video and you'd like to see more similar content then comment below. Also remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching.